one of the challenges when your vibration starts going really, really high is staying grounded. Um, when you have lots of kundalini, you know, flowing through your central channel, uh, we can start to get a bit ungrounded and feeling disconnected from earth, from our bodies. And so, you know, that's something that I've been going through is uh, with these, you know, abiding in these new higher frequencies for the moment, for the time being at least. Um, really making grounding like a, a priority. Uh, otherwise, it's just so easy to get just to kind of go up and out of your body into these other dimensions. And, and that's okay. You know, that's a, it's a nice problem to have on this path because there can be much more difficult uh, energetic scenarios that we can encounter, which is really what I'm going to talk about today in answering a question that came in about, you know, just the nature of a spontaneous awakening and all the darkness it can bring up. Um, and I just wanted to touch on a little bit more. No. I think I can just leave it. You know, I had a question come in about, um, you know, if they had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening and now they're dealing with uh, just lots of stuff like suicidal thoughts, um, feeling just overwhelmed by intrusive thoughts coming up, the nervous system in fight or flight. Uh, what else are they saying? Just these like really horrific dark images uh, being imagined up by their their psyche. Um, yeah, they're just going through a really hard time, and, and they're feeling very afraid. They're feeling just so scared, you know, for their well-being. And you know, it's just a uh, it's a it's it's sort of like a, this initiation phase and I don't know if all of us necessarily have to go through it into the depths that I had to go through it if you kind of go back and read about my story or the depths that this the questioner is, is going through it I got this question a while ago so I'm hoping that they're sort of coming to the other side of it but I still wanted to answer this uh, because I know that there will be more going through it I know that more of you are, are maybe in the depths of this intense darkness this and that's what it is. It just feels so intense. Like it's just got you. It's, it's so gripping. It's so jarring. It's, you're almost in shock. You didn't even know life could be so dark. You didn't even know. You've never encountered intrusive thoughts to this degree. Um, to this depth. And you can just get, you can just get totally uh, kind of sucked into it and overwhelmed by it. And it can feel downright hopeless. It can feel out of control. I'm just starting to tap back into when I was going through it a little bit. And and I'll just be honest, for me, it just feels so far and so distant. And, and maybe this can provide those of you who are going through it some hope. For me, it just feels like so far, so long ago, I, can, I can't quite access it as fully as I used to be able to because it just falls away. And, and that's the beautiful thing is one day you'll barely even be able to access like the pain and the agony and the darkness you're going through now because it will just it's it's a phase and it's just moving through um and it, it eventually it just falls away and it falls away for good the the trauma maybe there's the sense of the spiritual trauma that you're experiencing after some time after um after you know the kundalini goes through more and more of her integration process within you um, oh, there's a dog. Uh oh. Um, this, this uh, dreadfulness, this darkness, it, it really does um, become something that is just a distant memory, you know. And maybe you can, you can kind of reconnect with it to help others, sort of like I'm doing now. Um, you, it'll, it'll be in your system in a sense, so that you'll always be able to relate to someone on really deep levels who's, um, 
who's going through tough times, whether that's Kundalini related or, um, or if it's, they're just going through a, a dark time in general, you'll always uh, be able to really kind of have an understanding of, of how kind of gnarly it can get, of, of how hopeless it can get. Um, you know, you'll have this greater compassion within you for those that are suffering because of the um, immense suffering that you're going through. Hello, Pepper. Okay, okay, I'm shooting a video. I love you too. Yeah, okay, hi. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're gonna have to maybe restart the video or something. Um, but, okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's important to realize that, you know, the darkness you're going through now, even though it feels um, kind of immensely overwhelming and difficult, um, it is it is going to help you cultivate this sense of um, compassion and um, just sort of understanding um, for others and for yourself when you go back into a dark cycle, because this. This kundalini awakening it's not like you're just done with the darkness and then you're into the light forever you go through cycles light and dark cycles everyone goes through cycles whether you're in kundalini or you're just a human being on earth or you're an animal you know this is part of life on earth is there's light and there's dark however the the cycles that you go the dark cycles that you go through here going forward um they're not going to feel as out of control. They're not going to feel as overwhelming. You're going to have more tools. You're going to have more spaciousness. And like I said, you're going to have cultivated more of this compassion for yourself uh, because of what you're going through now, because of this is the gnarliest one. The, the, the first dark night of the soul you go through is, is really the one that just kind of, oh, it's, it feels like a miracle to make it to the other to the other side if I'm being downright honest for a lot of us that's how it was for me hopefully for you and for others it will feel less like a miracle because you'll have more resources there will be more videos like this one um, there will be more blog posts out there there will be more spiritual teachers and healers that you can really learn from their story or you can find some assurance in their presence um, so you won't have to so much feel like you're in it alone. Uh, and so, yeah, um, I know, I know what you're going through. Uh, I mean, we all have our own way with it, so it's not, we can't always a hundred percent know, but I, I just, I know these depths. I know the helplessness. Um, yeah, I know like the overwhelming gripping nature of it. And it feels like there's no way out. It feels like it's gonna be forever. It feels like it's eternity. It's just, it feels like endless agony. And even worse than agony, it just feels like, oh, like almost like a violence. Like you say, like see, these intrusive thoughts, it's just so, so in your face and constant. And yeah, it's like, the fiercest grace known to man or something that you're going through like this. And I say grace because th this darkness that you're experiencing, it's, it's not coming into you. It's actually been within you the whole time. It's just been, you haven't had the awareness or the presence or the light with, um, to the degree to, to kind of see it, to feel it, to know it. Or maybe you've been feeling it, but we've, we, our super ego or our psyche has been able to repress it to a certain degree. And so because it's not coming into you, because it's actually repressed darkness that's been in you this whole time, that's, that's the grace of it. It's like, it's like the light that you are is starting to wake up within you. And as the light that you really are is waking up within you, it's, it's shining a big light on all the darkness that has been buried within your body. It's like if you're to go into an attic that hasn't been cleaned for whatever, 18, 20, 30 years, however long, and you went into an attic and turned on the light right away, you're like, oh my God, it would be overwhelming at first. You would, you would, uh, 
you'd be like, oh my God, this is too much. This is so, it's gotten so, you know, built up with gunk and there'd be just dust everywhere and you maybe wouldn't even be able to breathe that well in the attic. You'd be like, oh, what's going on in here? Uh, and this is an analogy from calmdownmind.com. Maybe that website could help you. It's calmdownmind.com. Uh, but eventually, as you started kind of, you know, sifting through the attic and, and cleaning it, it would feel less and less overwhelming. And that's really this process is, is she, meaning the kundalini, and you are the kundalini, you are the light. Like I said, it, it's your true self that's waking up and it's, it's like your true self is waking up and reclaiming your body back, reclaiming your life force back. And it's, it's purging out, it's detoxifying everything within you. It's like pushing out everything within you that's, that's you know, in pain, that's trauma, that's not loving, that's not peace. It's, it's like pushing out any lower vibrations, you could say. And as the light that you are is pushing these vibrations out, it's like we have to f experience, we have to see the darkness as it's leaving us. We have to see all this horrific pain we've been storing, not only maybe from this life, but past lives, or uh, this horrific pain from our family lineage that got passed down to us that's in our cells and our DNA. And the light that you are is just like pushing this all out of your body. Uh, and you, you're having to see all these beliefs that you've been given your power to. And I mean, it is an act of grace. It's an act of liberation because we don't even know the prison that we're in. We don't even know the darkness that we've been kind of letting rule our life. We don't even know the conditioning and the programming that's been running us. And so... You know, the kundalini or the light that you are, same thing to me, is, you know, bringing a light to all that stuff. It's, it's purifying your vessel. It's emptying you out of all of it. But as that's happening, it's, you're going to have to see all that stuff. You're, you're like any childhood trauma is going to come up to be resolved. And that's why getting with good healers or, or therapists that have a deep understanding of the spiritual process it's so helpful because you have someone to walk you through the different layers that are coming up, someone to hold space for the different uh, aspects of yourself that are coming up for healing. And I don't want to make this too much for you to take in. I'm just trying to make it simple for now. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the grace of it. So it's, it's helping you release all of these programs and all of this pain, all of this stored up darkness and, and density. Um, and the other beautiful part about this that doesn't feel beautiful is it's helping you take your power back from your mind space because your mind's going to be going berserk right now. Your mind's going to be throwing a tantrum. Your mind's going to be noticing that it's kind of losing control of this, this kind of, of your life in a sense that it's no longer, it's like something's happening that's, um, beyond your mind's capacity to really understand or um, or control, like I said. So your mind's going to just be throwing up all kinds of thought storms and it, you're just going to be going through a lot with the mind and it's going to be like really angry. It's going to be fearful. It, it's it's going to, it's just a lot for the mind, for the psyche. And you might feel like it's disintegrating. You might feel a bit disoriented. Um, but this is a chance for you to let go of identifying with the mind because it's almost like we were forced, the divine is forcing us to let go of identification with the mind because it's just going to be too painful. So we have to let go of, of thinking that we are our mind. This is where like the, the rubber meets the road in this process and this f first kind of initiation with the Kundalini it's it's just this really fierce grace of it gets too painful to go on thinking that we are our mind it's like we have to we come to this sense that oh my gosh i'm not my mind we get to hold space for the mind um this is where we start to kind of untangle our identification with mind and we plug our identification into the divine or into our spaciousness or into our beingness our inner being like we're a being first and foremost 
or you could say we're an energy field first and foremost. And within that energy field, within that beingness exists the mind. And the mind is more like a machine, like a programmed machine. Over time, your mind space will become more silent. It won't be fighting this process. It will just, it will take its natural place in this process of um, just a, a tool that's here to help serve the beingness that you are or the field of energy that you are. It's not gonna be trying to take ownership and authorship of this whole thing called this human existence. It just kind of falls into its natural place. It, sometimes it can get a bit noisy if it's, if it's feeling like it, you, maybe you're not, maybe you're just ignoring it totally and it's, it's needing a little bit of entertainment or, as you can see how I'm talking about it, it gets so innocent. It's, it's not something that's gonna be causing you so much stress and duress and trouble because, because you're disidentified with it, you can actually help it more. The mind space, you can actually kind of create more of this soothingness for it, for it to help stay calm. You just look at it as this part of you that is innocent. And that's what it is. The mind is just an innocent survival machine. And so when Kundalini first blasts open in you, holy cow, it's, it's gonna really freak out. But in a sense, there's the, the kind of the goodness in that is, or the grace in it is, we get a chance to see it for what it really is. Just an innocent survival machine with lots of programs running in it that are rooted in fear and lack and trauma and pain. And, and as you do the inner healing work, more and more the mind space, like I said, it just becomes really quiet. And then you can almost kind of be the mind again because it's so kind of empty. And over time you kind of lose track that of, of it all and it just becomes this oneness within you of spaciousness and sometimes the mind can can come up but it's it's a, a much different relationship starts to take place within you when it comes to your mind space and so that's like another grace another aspect of grace of this process is you're you're getting to know that you're not your mind you're getting to see the programs in the mind that were running that were rooted in fear and lack and unworthiness and not good enough you get to see all the tr the, the trauma comes up and empties out that was uh really keeping your expression maybe repressed maybe you weren't able to be authentic and maybe it was keeping your heart closed and maybe you were living in fear of of others of, of life uh, so all this terror that you've been storing in your body, maybe, that, like I said, it comes from past lives as well. It's, it's, it's like the Kundalini is purging that out. And that's beautiful because you're going to get to live a life where you get to be yourself. <laughs> and that's a great life. That's a great life. Um, you're going to get to live this life where you're, you're just free of all of this stuff, of all of your, your ancestor, or of all of like your con conditioning from maybe childhood and from the stuff that gets passed down to you in your DNA and, and your cells from, from your ancestors that is, that is dark. It's like you're here to end the lineage of, of trauma that's been passed down into, this, into your body. And you're gonna start a new lineage, right? And that's, ending the lineage is a big job. It's a big task. And for a while there, it can just feel like you don't have what it takes, but that's, that's how the divine kind of breaks us down into a deeper surrender it's because it's like we actually don't have what it takes in a way because it's it's the divine that does this and so you know all that's really required of you and you've hopefully heard this a, a lot by now is is that you just you need to just surrender you surrender you it's just more and more this whole thing of living an awakened life is just getting out of the way that's all that's really what it becomes is just um, getting out of the way and allowing the divine to be the healer because it's the divine that's the healer wow those dogs are I've been doing so good about like not letting it disrupt my flow <laughs> oh, I wish someone would attend to it so it would stop barking um, but that's not happening and that's okay um, yeah, so that's the big thing is just knowing that the divine's the healer, 
I wrote a lot of stuff down and I think I basically covered a lot of it that was important. Um, yeah, I think I just wanted to make sure there's nothing that was like groundbreaking that I missed or something, right? Um, I think one thing I said is like you're that I wrote down that's nice is like you're birthing your higher self or like you're birthing this uh, upgraded version of yourself and that can feel like going into labor and for a while like that's what it's like it's like oh my god it's like you're giving birth it's just like oh and I've obviously never given birth but uh, I've had a lot of female clients of mine talk to me about it and they're like it feels that's what they feel like they feel like they're in labor and I just felt like that's like something that fits super good with this process is is it is yeah it's like oh it's like the the pains of that but on the other side of it it's like wow you've given new life new life is birthing within you and so that's gonna cover all a there's all aspects of of birthing new life right it's like the messy the, oh the, the the just like the excruciating pain of it um yeah i hope that this helps give some perspective on what's happening and and you know, you just you just hang on the best you can through the hard times. And you just keep trusting and you keep praying and you keep inviting help in. Um, you, Cause that's it, like it's it's the big, the bigness of the divine mother and her soothing grace is, is what's really needed and what's really being called for and asked for, especially in, in the earlier stages of this process when we feel extra vulnerable and extra helpless and just super overwhelmed. It's like calling in the, the healing grace of the Divine Mother. Maybe Jesus resonates with you. Another one to call in Archangel Michael or finding um, the words and the grace and the streams of support and divinity that can help support you and connecting with those and really, um, you know, it's like that humility of like, oh my gosh, I can't do this alone. That humility, that, which creates the space for help to come in and it might be a person it might be the right therapist or spiritual healer or someone that helps you with body work you know etc whatever you find that can resonate with your soul that helps you feel safe finding safety within this process i would try to go out and hug trees when i was in your phase and i was so disconnected from nature at the time that it, it wouldn't really help so much but it, it was like a start at least i was initiating or it didn't seem to help, but I underneath it all, I, I know it was starting. It was starting to um, create a kind of a new inner movement within me that's only deepened over time. To now, when I feel a tree, I feel it's like my brother or my sister or something. You know, it's like part of me, and you know, I just yeah, you feel really connected. So yeah, cultivating a sense of safety uh, is key um, as much as you can. And I really feel like, or finding groups, there's a Kundalini support groups are really helpful. Craig Holiday has one. You just Google Craig Holiday and his videos will come up and then all the information for joining uh, or just any support groups online or Facebook that you find, that you might find just f being able to connect with other humans that are either going through it or have been through it. And I'm sure there's more and more information out there. I hope, I haven't Googled this kind of stuff in a while, but I hope there's good stuff out there you can read through some of my blogs even that I, I wrote when I was a bit closer and I could access uh, the pain a bit more of it. And so yeah, I hope that this video has been helpful for you uh, or for anyone going through the darkness of, you know, the hell realm periods of Kundalini or the, the suicidal thoughts, or the darkness that just feels overwhelming. I'm sending you all so much love. And yeah, if this work resonates with you and you'd like to support it in some way, I do have donation links in the description box and in the comments below. It's really an excellent way to, uh, yeah, to, to help out if, if that feels inspired. I also have a link to book a session with me if you're feeling in need of one-on-one -on -one support. Um, I do have some openings, um, so I'm, offer, I'm, I'm happy to offer any support I can as well. All right, see you in the next video. Namaste.